All right, on this episode of MMA Canada Radio, very excited to be talking to an individual competing on March 31st, which goes down at Sinbi Boxing Stadium in Thailand, a USA versus Canada flyweight title fight as Colt Kilbasa and James Clark get out there to test skills and great heaven James on MMA Canada Radio. How are you doing, man? You having a solid day? Yeah, not not too bad, man. Uh, just uh, living life in Thailand, man. Can't complain. So uh, I've been out here for uh, just over two months now. Got uh, a little under a month to go. Uh, I believe it's 19 days. Who's counting? And uh, yeah, just thankful to uh, finally getting uh, getting a fight again and uh, showing everybody about what we've been working on. Uh, soul season. <laughs> yeah, this is your sixth time in Thailand, right? Yeah, yeah, this is my uh, my sixth time, and actually this is the uh, longest uh, trip I've had. I had to extend it a month to, to pull this off, but um, I had a few few sponsors help me out on the on the travel expenses and stuff near the end, so it all it all worked out, and uh, it's just going to be a little later start to the roof in uh, season this year. But uh, the MMA, anyone that knows me knows this MMA. Uh, comes before just about anything yeah well, it seems like you're in such a great place i mean obviously you've had such you know great teaching from so many people in the gta but i mean just speaking to like the thailand specific work that we're talking about it seems like you've gotten in a lot of great bang tao muay thai work and everything like that so yeah i love to see that man i feel like whenever i see something pop up on your instagram with that it's always something cool going down yeah, yeah, you know, I, I like to, uh, you know, social media can be, uh, you know, it doesn't tell the whole story sometimes, right? A lot of people, uh, you know, they don't put the whole truth on there. But, yeah, I've, uh, I've just been grinning year to year with the amount of support I've got. Like, uh, uh, I've got um, the Hickman brothers, uh, Frank and George. Um, they really took me under their wing. Uh, Brad Riddell. Um, Kickboxing coach here, obviously, uh, in the UFC as well, and um, uh, Woody, strength and conditioning coach. They've uh, they've really uh, they've really emulated basically a lot of what I have back home as well. Um, obviously, uh, you know, it's it. anyone that understands the MMA uh, world understands. Uh, you know, you might you might fight in there alone, but it, it takes a it takes a good team to get you to the highest level and keep you there so uh i'm just just really grateful um they've all taken me under their wing like um frank obviously he's been in um izzy and uh volkanovsky's uh i think entire mma career so as their wrestling coach so wrestling being my main background obviously uh that's been very beneficial and uh george was actually the first guy George's brother is the first guy that I met um, at, at Tiger, and uh, we, we hit it off from the start. He, uh, he likes to bug me a bit, but I, I think that means he likes me. So, uh, you know, he, he's just given me a lot of his time, and, uh, you know, I have just the utmost respect for them, and uh, it's a huge confidence booster, uh, especially stepping in there uh, down here and just uh, having them in my corner as well. Obviously, shout-out to Justin Bruckman and uh, Joe Elliott, uh, Gord McVale, obviously, uh, my main guys tattooed on my legs back home. Uh, you know, they're going to be with me till the end. And, uh, I know they would be here in a heartbeat if they could, but, uh, we're halfway across the world chasing this dream down. So, uh, they might not be here with me, uh, but they, they definitely are in spirit and they, they got me to this point. So, uh, you know, just not looking to disappoint anyone and, uh, put on a show, man, like I always fucking do. Yeah, for sure, and I'm sure <clears throat> many fights in the future to be had where, you know, they can be in the corner, and yeah, just cool, you have, like, multiple spaces to get in that great work at, and even in terms of, like, some of the, I guess, like, sparring partners and whatnot over the years, I mean, it seems like, you know, have you working with guys like Kyrat Akhmatov and stuff like that, so love to see that. Yeah, like, James Gallagher, obviously, I was training with him for his camp, he's fighting uh, next week, I believe, uh, in PFL, um, he was originally supposed to fight Jeremy Kennedy, but I think he's fighting some Hugo guy now, too. So just, like, big names, you know, like, obviously, just knowing that I can, uh, you know, do certain things to these big
great names that uh, a lot of people, I just know, uh, you know, there's always people that don't believe in you and um, <laughs> they, they'd be mind blown by uh, some of the things that I've done here. But obviously training is much different than the fight as well. But uh, it's just a huge confidence booster, right? Like um, I got the better of some kid uh, in sparring on Mondays, 17 and 4 Bantamweight. You know, I don't fight at Bantamweight. <laughs> um, so, you know. It's just uh, I know I know I'm uh, I know the wheels are turning you know so I'm 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 doing well and uh, I'm just super confident and I think uh, that's a huge mental and uh, confidence is a huge part in this game right so I'm obviously I'm fighting a guy who has a win in one championship um, he uh, he's another good wrestler from America. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of things that separate us, and I think that's just the, the come up. Uh, I've I've been fighting these top wrestlers, like uh, the the last wrestler I lost to was James Manzini, um, and when I was smoking cigarettes. So I, I've changed a lot of things since then that needed to be changed, um, and I, I just don't think he's fought uh, the same type of uh, level of competition. I, I believe he's wrestled the same competition like he's wrestled guys like me but uh those guys couldn't submit him in wrestling they didn't have a uh, brown belt under justin bruckman so i think there's going to be a lot of things that uh he's never seen before that i bring to the table and i i can't wait to uh see his face when he finds out yeah, and it's interesting you mentioned that because I'd seen the post where you referenced your opponent having a win under the one championship banner, and I feel like you've kind of been eyeing them for a while now. Like, I feel like that could serve the master of getting that outcome of fighting in the one circle one day. I mean, it certainly doesn't hurt having a victory over someone who has garnered a victory in the one circle, right? Right, right. He, he did it pretty flawlessly. The guy, the guy was forty-three years old. I mean, I don't want to pump his tires too much. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he wasn't a wrestler either. The guy he beat up, but uh, he also just lost to a twelve and ten dude last week. So you know, I like to keep tabs. I don't, I don't play too, too much into it. But uh, you know, I, I think I have a pretty good mind in the game, and I, I see things that uh, others may not. I do my homework. So uh, if he did too, then he knows that uh, it could potentially be a war. And uh, every time I fight, uh, doesn't matter if it's a war or, uh, or if it's a quick dub, uh, I'm, I'm coming. I'm not making no plans after, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it is what it is. Um, I, I just can't wait to get in there and show everybody what I got, man. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been too long since June. Um, I, I tried to fight a little more frequently this year. Uh, didn't really have much, uh, many offers. Um, seemed like I, I don't want to talk too much shit about the boys down there uh, in Canada and stuff. But uh, you know, I was, uh, I was promised a couple of things, and uh, they basically offered me a last minute thing with uh, Tony on like a couple of weeks because Louis got injured. And it's like uh, when I already had this trip booked. So not not too many offers uh, coming in down there in Canada. So, uh, you know, I had to, uh, I, I knew I had to do something. And, uh, you know, I just, I didn't know it would be uh, fighting in Thailand and uh, the way it all worked out. But that, that's life, right? Take, uh, yeah, without risk, you have no future. So um, I'm, I'm just looking forward to uh, the future. Yeah, I mean, for sure. And definitely, you know, looking to the future is always great. But I feel like I'd be remiss if I <clears throat> didn't at least briefly touch on that last fight there. It must have been cool getting to, you know, win a belt in Oshawa and get to, you know, put on at Tribute Community Center. And I mean, first round finish doesn't hurt either. So yeah, what was that all like? Yeah, I mean, that was a dream come true on its own. I got my first TKO as well. You know, I almost got 40 fights, including amateur, and I still never knocked anybody out in the in the cage anyway, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it was a dream come true. Obviously, uh, my manager and, uh, um, Brandon Kaljanic and, uh, all those boys down there, Bruckman, you know, they help put, put a show like that on. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't happen without guys like that. And, uh, I'm thankful to have, uh, connections with those guys. Like 
I mean, we we weren't even that was just their first time, right? And they, I think they, I ain't ever seen a show like that in uh, Canada. Uh, I must have been a record as far as uh, uh, seats sold. Um, and uh, I grew up in Oshawa, so like I'm I'm from the, I'm from the dirty schwa, so uh, you know it was uh, it was extra special for me. I might. I might have been born in Lindsay, but I grew up in Oshawa. So yeah, like I said, it was just a real dream come true. I fought, um, I fought on the same card as a lot of. Uh, well, I got to be the main event on the same card as a lot of my close friends. Um, you know, uh, Justin Condy, uh, uh, Blake Oswald, uh, Matt Embry, uh, Bubba, Ethan. Um, like it, it was just a super special uh, moment sharing the night with uh, Matt Dawson. Can't leave that motherfucker out. I know he's listening. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a, it was a super uh, it was a super important moment for me, and uh, I don't think it'll ever happen again. I don't know if it could ever be repeated again. So um, you know, every next fight is always the craziest uh, thing. I, before that, I was fighting on CFFC, and uh, I got got robbed in Philly the night before. So, you know, every, it seems like every fight I have, so there's always a story to tell, uh, you know, including the whole trip and, uh, you know, obviously just getting my hand raised. That's the, the main goal in all this, right? Well, yeah, I mean, that was a wild one too. The fact that you, you know, kept the composure and, you know, still put on the performance that you did. I mean, I think that says a lot. Like, I mean, yeah, that was wild. I almost kind of forgot about that, the whole robbery situation before the CFFC fight. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was a, it was a super big uh, moment uh, for me being co-main event on UFC Fight Pass on uh, one of the biggest promotions out there. So, um, uh, I don't, I wasn't really impressed with my uh, my performance, but it was gritty and I, we, I got the job done including, uh, you know, uh, I think the biggest thing about a champion, uh, is you, you can't, it can't always be a perfect situation. You know, you need to know how to win under, um, in imperfect, uh, situations like that. And I think that was just one of the big things that, uh, that I got through. Also, I believe that was my hardest fight. Aaron Lafarge, obviously we, we keep up in touch still. Uh, I'm actually wearing a shirt right now. Funny. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he's a solid wrestler, and uh, I think that's just a huge confidence booster moving forward, like the guy I'm about to fight. Like, he reminds me a lot of Aaron Lafarge's wrestling. Um, but on the flip of the switch, I just don't think he ever got tested like Aaron Lafarge. Um, you know, he never really took those tough, tough fights. So I think uh, I think that's the difference maker in all this. But uh, like I said, I... you everybody's got a plan to get punched in the face. So who am I to, to judge, right? Uh, we'll, we'll let the judges do their thing and hopefully we don't need them. <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting how you're talking about this fight. Cause in one sense, it seems like you're really wanting to be like adaptable and kind of free flowing with where the fight goes, but you'd kind of made a comment earlier in the conversation talking about his wrestling base and, whatnot in the context of yeah well I mean those wrestlers he was facing didn't have the opportunity to submit him though like obviously you're gonna like let the fight play out as it does but do you see maybe like a submission as the predominant finish perhaps definitely definitely I think uh I think the biggest difference is like I'm not saying he's not a threat off of his back but I don't plan to be on my back ever really anyway so obviously uh the main goal is to uh, submit him from the top, uh, regardless. But I think, uh, you know, as soon as it hits the mat, like, wrestling involves hitting the mat. So I think, uh, you know, once it does go to that, because uh, it's inevitable, um, yeah, we're, we're both, we're both going to strike or ten strike or whatever. And uh, obviously I want to showcase I'm in Thailand, um, you know, uh, it's something that I've constantly tried to uh, improve on. Uh, like you said, this is my sixth trip in Thailand. Like uh, a, a lot of the people that know me know how, how good of a striker I really am in the gym. Um, it's just something that I haven't showcased very much. Um, do I plan to have a full-out war with him? Like, no, it's not a Muay Thai fight. So, 
No, uh, we're, we're going to wrestle at one point, um, whether it be in the first 30 seconds or in the last minute of the last round or whatever, right? So um, regardless, it's going to hit the mat. And yeah, I uh, I, see an, I see a Lindsay headlock coming on, actually. So, uh, you know, I uh, who knows? Uh, he was talking a bit of shit on the thing, trying to hype it up and stuff. And it's like, well... I broke seven guys' arms, and I, although I'm not proud of that, like they do, as John Jones once said, they'd do the same to me if they could. So I'm wi- I'm willing to uh, I'm willing to snap that thing in two, and uh, for for my goal, so uh, to live this goal of uh, being a professional uh, fighter and quitting roofing one day. So uh, in a heartbeat, man, uh, I'll take that submission. Yeah, and I mean, mentioning Jones there, I saw he came by Bangtao for a seminar. What was that all like? Oh, that was insane, man. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool to to even go to a, you know, how many people get to say they went to a John Jones seminar. I, he has a, as, as a guy who's getting ready to uh, uh, fight still, um, he, he just doesn't strike me as a guy that uh, goes out of his way to do too many seminars. So I feel like it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And, uh, you know, um, the year before when I was fighting, when I was getting ready to, three weeks before I was getting ready to fight Aaron Lafarge, I actually got to roll with GSP. I went down and trained at TriStar. And obviously he fought uh, my coach, Justin Bruckman and stuff. Uh <laughs> Shout out Bruckman. I know he loves when I bring that up. Um, but like, how many people? Uh, how many people get to say they went to uh, GSP and then seminar, and then two weeks later, John Jones, right? So, um, yeah, I'm just super grateful. I uh, I'm going to Kevin Gaslin's seminar here in a couple weeks as well. So um, I, I got to. Uh, uh, he's been. He actually comes to the, all the sparring and. Kevin actually he's one of the he, he like this is he treats this gym as like uh, a camp so um, he comes to all the regular sparring classes as well uh, super humble dude actually it's just uh, I've been grinning year to year uh, uh, the whole time like even Brad Riddell like he they're, they're all doing uh, personal sessions with me as well um, for this uh, getting ready for this fight like Brad Riddell's been helping me with my uh, kickboxing. Um, George has been uh, helping me. And, uh, yeah, 7.30 in the morning, I got to wake up and uh, do a personal with Frank. Uh, we, we do twice a week as well. So um, I'm just uh, super grateful that they've been giving me their time. And, uh, obviously, uh, I'm putting in the extra work because, uh, you know, I, I know how many people uh, like like since I started this MMA journey, I know how many people have believed in me and, uh, see my potential. So, um, you know, uh, my main priority has always been to not let myself down, but you know, um, it, it's always a little extra special when you're, uh, you know, you got so many people that are putting, giving you their, their time. Right. Yeah, I know for sure. It's been a long road since fighting on the tarps out in Lindsay in the backyard and all that. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, it might uh it might have shaped me a bit, but I've uh I've grown. I've I've grown uh tremendous since then. So uh, you know, I uh it just just means the world that uh I feel like I belong, you know, in this game when it, when I was fighting for TKO and I had a one in three record, uh not uh, there's a lot of people that believed in me uh before all that and uh you know I I could read them like a book. Uh, they they thought I was done, but uh, I never did. So, you know, it it's funny to see them turn that cheek now. Well, yeah, I mean, I felt like that was kind of the case at, like, even different points for you. I feel like it's one of those things where, like, the skills you bring to the table, <clears throat> like, really, like, speak for you. Because I remember you had a post a bit ago talking about, like, when you fought like a 17 time world champion ranked number six in the U S and you were four and three and a lot of people were overlooking you, but I feel like people don't really like as much like look at like the actual context of the records. Sometimes it's like, 
you really turned a lot of things around and whatnot. And it seems like you learned from all those experiences too. Yeah, man. Like, uh, definitely, uh, people, people must have all forgot type deal. Right. So, uh, (laughs) you know, uh, and then actually after I, uh, I should have finished that kid actually too, but he, he was really, he was tough, 17 world champ. Um, but I, I think I scored a 50, 44 or 50 something. I don't know. I think there's three, 10, eight rounds. Um, I got tied for like the most lopsided scorecard, uh, Rich Franklin and some other dude, I guess were the last people that, uh, had a lopsided card. I don't know. They were telling me some statistic after and I just kind of wrote it off like, well, if I beat him that bad, I should have finished his ass. But, uh, you know, I was a huge underdog for that, as I should have been for almost a 500 record fighting a guy with 50 pro fights and 17 world titles fought in Bellator. Like, I fought guys from the that fought in the big show. And, uh, you know, he, he was battle-tested. I guess there was a reason why I couldn't finish him that night. Um, whereas I just feel like... Uh, I feel like this guy is very skilled. I just feel like he's not battle tested. Um, like in his last fight, he got his face broken. Uh, he got his orbital broken. Sure, maybe he was tough enough to uh, get a doctor stoppage or something and see the round out. I couldn't find the fight or not, but uh, um, I think it was in pancreas or something. But uh, you know, I just feel like uh, I just feel like he's not battle tested. I feel like he. He fought a he fought like three or four Thai guys that had uh, I I know about I know two guys. There's this one Peter guy and my buddy Top Noy. Um, there's not too many other Thai guys that have decent enough wrestling or wrestling defense to showcase their striking against a guy like me or Colton. So like I I just feel like he padded his record a bit and that got him to the big show. Got him to one championship and. And you know, he he was able to pat his record a little more fighting a forty three year old guy. Like uh, there's not too many Dan Hendersons out there, if you feel me, you know. And uh, I just feel like uh, I feel like he's fucked around long enough, and he's about to find out. Well, I was going to say that's a <clears throat> great line. I mean, probably a good way to end things off on. But I'm mean, curious if maybe there was a final parting thought that you did want to add as we were kind of wrapping things up here, James. Yeah, no, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm in the right, I'm in the right mindset, man. It all, it all, you're only as good as your last fight. And, uh, you know, I just, I just feel like, uh, this is my time. I feel like I'm going to put on a show. I do expect to finish in this fight. Um, I'm always gunning for that finish and yeah, I'm smelling a, I'm smelling a submission for sure. I don't, I don't get heard of the Lindsay headlock, but, uh. You know, I'm, I'm not banking on anything. If it, if we go to war and he ends up stopping a few takedowns or whatever, then uh, everybody everybody will find out how good I already... Most people already know that my striking is. Um, it's, it's in a ring, so maybe that'll create a different element as far as uh, striking or whatnot. But I'm, I'm prepared for... I'm prepared for any way it can go. Uh, that's fighting. That's why we love it so much. Um, you know, like I, I was just telling someone the other day about we, we just watched the Korean zombie uh, uh, Rodriguez fight where he got elbowed in the last second. Like, uh, you know, uh, Leon Edwards landing that head kick, right? Like, uh, who, who knows where this next fight will take me, but uh, I, I, feel, uh, I feel it's only up. Yeah, super excited to see the next chapter in the story unfurl here, and March 31st should be a great card overall, and this Colt Kielbasa fight, definitely a fun one in Thailand, and appreciate you coming on MMA Canada Radio to make the time, James. All the best in the remainder of the preparations, and yeah, thanks so much for the time, and have a good rest of your day, man. Much respect there, uh, Dylan. Uh, can't, make, can't wait to make uh, you and Canada proud. Uh... Welcome to Soul Season. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I love that, man. I always love the Soul Season build up into all the fights. And yeah, no, it's going to be great to check this one out. And yeah, thanks so much for the insights, man. All the best. Yeah, sounds good, man. I appreciate your time, eh?